In this talk, I'm going to talk about recording a test script, which is the first thing that you need to do to make a runnable test. So, in the workspace I created before, I uh, do new test from recording. And it's an HTTP test because that we're doing web pages. I'm going to store it under test and I'm going to name the the, the test Google with Firefox because that's what I'm going to do. That's going to be the name of the test script. And I'm saying use Firefox. Next, which is going to show me a number of options that I can take all the defaults on. Typically, you can take the defaults. Click finish, and it's going to bring up Firefox as well as this little annotation toolbar. Now when you come up when the test first comes up, RPT is going to tell you you probably want to remove temporary files from your browser cache, which is true. You typically want to do a recording with a clean browser cache so that you record everything that a real browser would. And that's how you clear the cache in Firefox. And now I'm going to use the uh, annotation toolbar to create a comment and typically what I do best practice is put a comment do the mouse click wait till the page fully loads and then use the toolbar to name the page so here I'm going to uh, add a comment I'm going to copy it because I'm going to name the page that later and I'm going to go to google.com okay now this is unusual but it occurs here because we're doing an HTTPS connection and RPT is getting in the middle of it so it's requiring an exception you won't see that if you're doing HTTP but with HTTPS you, you get that now so I've gone to the Google page and this a little screen in the background shows me the HTTP connections that are still open and that has to do with the connection reuse HTTP likes to reuse connections if possible because it's more efficient and you have to be very careful with that when recording a uh, test with RPT because RPT will play back the same connections that are recorded. Okay, so this page is fully downloaded so I'm going to type the page name here. And uh, I don't want you to do anything else until those connections close because as I said RPT will play back those connections and the thing is that when you play back a script you typically vary the think time so you don't play it back exactly as recorded and so if you think longer than the connection time then it's possible that RPT will try to reuse a connection that has timed out and that will cause extra messages to flow to the server uh, at to TCP connections and then the, re the reply comes back to say this connections closed already you can't use it and so then RPT will send another connection so you'll accidentally send twice as many connections to the server as a real world user would so that's basically a disaster for a performance test so best practice here is to wait until the connections time out before doing another mouse click it looks like Google has these connections set the time out for about a minute. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to add a, con uh, a comment for the next page in anticipation. I'm going to do a search. So that's the comment. There are the connections have timed out. And so now I can do a search. And I'll search for Rational Performance Tester just for the heck of it. There's a search and you can see all the messages flowing to the server and it's got the answer already. I learned through hard knocks that you do not w want to uh, reuse connections accidentally. Alright, so now I'm, I'm going to name the page that I just went to. Actually, I don't want to call I always want to call it search one because when I play it back I'm not going to necessarily search for that. Yeah, in our, in our lab we actually set the the connection t reuse timeout 
value to a fairly low value. Uh, but I'm going to a real web page so they use one minute. I'm just going to wait for the timeout. Okay, now in the meantime, I can put a comment in there to say what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy that so that I can use it for a page name later. Now, in this case, I really don't have to wait till the connection is timeout because I'm not going to back to google.com. I'm going to go to wherever the links are, and this looks like ibm.com. But just at a general principle, I'm going to wait till those connections time out, having been burned by not doing that. Now you can fix those. If you accidentally reuse the connection in a test and you want to change it, there is a way that you can edit the test to force a, a new uh, connection. But if you can avoid having to do that, that makes your life easier. All right, there they're starting to time out. Two of them are left. And it'll tell you where, what host they're going to. Like I say in the lab, we set a fairly short connection reuse time at while we're recording tests. There they go. So now I clicked on one of those links. There's all the connections, and there's the page. And now the page is loaded so I'm going to name the page click OK and now the, uh, that's the end of the test that I'm recording so when you want to end the test you just close the browser window and RPT will automatically start generating the test This will take longer for a longer test and shorter for a shorter test. And when that finishes, we get the option to open the test, which I'll do. And when you open the test, it, RPT will tell you it's found some dynamic information that probably needs substitutions. You can't always, you, as in fact, you usually can't just play back a recorded test. You have to go and substitute information. And this is showing where the substitutions are. And this is showing you right now in list format. You can also see it in tree format, which I'll show right. That's the list. This is showing as a tree. And if you show it as a tree, it will show you which page it came from. So if I scroll up, you'll see the page name, which is Google homepage for this one, which is what I named the page. And it just helps you know where the, where the substitutions, what page they're on. You can see all these pages that I named. There's uh, pages in green or, or link, parts of links in green indicate substitution needs to occur. Things in pink indicate that RPT has already figured out where to substitute. So if I look at the test, now you can see well, here's all everything that came with the Google home page. Just watch how I scroll there. You see the, the, the disappearing scroll bar? That's an eclipse thing. Okay, now you can see that there's some things that look like they're dynamic in there that are not substituted and RPT didn't figure out they needed to be substituted but typically you're going to have to figure out where those come from and how to substitute and so it, it really is helpful to work directly with the developers so you can ask them where did these values come from and what do I have to do to properly substitute them in this case with Google I don't have the option of working with the developers and so this would be very difficult to turn into a running test script Safe browsing downloads is something that Firefox gives you. It's not part of the website, and the best thing to do is delete that element, which is what I'm going to do right here. Let's click on delete, get rid of that call, 
and there's my search request. And you can see my comment and you can see my page name. Search is the comment, search one is the page name. And there's my comment and some page name is clicking on the search result. And you can see all the elements that were fetched with for that. And now I'm going to save the page because I edited it. I removed the safe browsing downloads and that's it for the basic recording.